welcome to this uh, uh, career lecture, the Center for Research on Religion. Uh, the uh, uh, center is a partner in a uh, short partnership grant uh, based here at McGill. Uh, early modern conversions, religions, cultures, and cognitive ecologies. And uh, I think I haven't quite figured out what a cognitive ecology is, but that's my job because I'm part of the, the research project. But several of the people here whose faces I recognize are participants in this, and we're delighted to welcome today uh, Professor Wayne Hankey from uh, Dalhousie University and King's College on the East Coast. Uh, Professor Hankey has been at King's for over 50 years, I, I think I'm right yes, on that. Yes, that's right. Uh, and uh, he is uh, uh, Carnegie Professor of Classics and Chair of the Classics with Religious Studies. So there's it's religious studies is very interesting configurations in different places, but at, at, uh, at, at Dalhousie it's associated with classics, which makes eminent good sense. I always think the classics department of McGill would, would be much happier with us than with the history department, but don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I've known Dr. Hankey for 40 years. Uh, I was a, he was my tutor when I was an undergraduate, and uh, so it's, it's a great pleasure to be able to welcome him here to McGill. Dr. Hankey's published uh, uh, scores of articles on Neoplatonism, uh, the thought of Thomas Aquinas, Bonaventure, uh, also um, 20th century French philosophy, uh, and his connection with the history of Neoplatonism. Uh, his book, the uh, titled God in Himself, which is a study of the first uh, 45 questions of Aquinas' Summa Theologica, is um, uh, was published by Oxford University Press in 1987, and it was brought out again in uh, Oxford classical monographs. Is that the series? Yeah, uh, what is it? Yes. Anyway, so it's it's the thing they did for to celebrate their uh, their uh, the anniversary of the press. That's right, yeah. and and so they they collect they selected eighteen mm -hmm. titles from oh. each of their areas, yeah. and these are now right. permanently in press. Well, uh, oh, it's I'm an Oxford scholar in classic. Is, is what I am. That's our that's our Okay. Uh, so anyway, if you're interested in, in the, the the metaphysics of Aquinas, this is a book you've got to read. So anyway, uh, Dr. Hankey is going to tell us today about uh, conversion, uh, ontological and secular from Plato to Tom Jones, uh, and of course that's Henry Fielding's Tom Jones. So <laughs> welcome and uh, thank you for visiting us. Oh, thank you. There's lots of chairs if you'd like to sit down. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, and over here for example. Well, uh, I'm very glad to be here. It somehow seems that I ought to have been here earlier since uh, I have so many former students of mine here, uh, several of whom are in the room, but several of whom are not. And uh, um, uh, the, uh, I feel a strong connection with, uh, with McGill, but um, I, I want to get on with my paper, so we won't talk about all that at the moment. Um, and there's lots of things I could say about how I became interested in Tom Jones and how I uh, finally began to see that, that what was going on in Tom Jones was uh, to be understood in terms of Platonism, um, not least because he says so. And if you look at the quotations on the, on the little sheet that you've got there, uh, you'll see that, uh, um, that he represents what Sophia is, and indeed uh, the other great converted figure in this work, all, um, um, Squire Allworthy, in terms of, uh, yeah, that's got it on there too, yes. Um, in terms of, of, um, of uh, uh, in, in platonic terms, in terms of the phaedrus. And, um, but also there's the, what, what really, after many, after missing it several times around, what really got me uh, to think that this could all, should all be understood in the kind of context I'm going to give it to you today, is this extraordinary moment, um, it's recorded here, Sophia, expecting to find no one in the room, came hastily in and went directly to a glass, a mirror, which almost fronted her, without once looking towards the upper end of the room where the statue of Jones now stood motionless. In this glass it was, after contemplating her own lovely face, which turns out to be that which moves everything in this work, uh, that she first discovered the said statue, 
when instantly turning about, she perceived the reality of the vision. And I think anyone who knows much about the history of Platonism will know that that is not to be understood outside of that tradition. So, this is the, the title, Conversion Ontological and Secular from Plato to Tom Jones. Treating conversion mainly as a psychic, ontological, and secular, my paper is oriented to understanding its forms in novels of Samuel Richardson, Henry Fielding, and Jane Austen. 19th, early 19th century. The foundational representation is that of the cave and the line in the Republic. There the gods and religious practice are not mentioned either as the goal or means of the conversion. They stand in the background because Parmenides' way of truth lies there. They are certainly found as end and means in the Anagoge, described by Diotima in the Symposium, and in the Gnothi Seoton, know yourself, of the Alcibiades, to which the cave conversion is assimilated in the Platonic tradition. The divine and religious practice will belong to the Platonic anagoge, not only for the Middle and Neoplatonists, but also when they merge with the Abrahamic <coughs> monotheisms to determine a fundamental of the Western religious and philosophical traditions. There, most notoriously in Augustine's account of the Trinity, and its Latin successors, even the divine being, will convert upon itself. So the first section is called From the Cave to the Divine Mirror, Conversion in the Republic, the Symposium, and the Alcibiades. By, the way, of the, by way of the analogy of the cave, the movement of the prisoners bent down by their chains up the line from ignorance, non-being, and darkness to knowledge, being, light, and their source, the good, is to turn around, strafein. A journey upwards, a conversion, paragoge, is required. This demands someone with the art of leading round, techne tes paragoges, who can convert, metastrafesta testai. Someone who has seen the light must return to the dark and help the prisoners break their chains, turn round, move outwards and up. The resulting soteriology is most completely worked out philosophically by Iamblichus and Proclus. Religions, pagan, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim have this idea and these images at their center and a converting savior or saviors, Protagoras, Moses, Jesus. Convergence of the Abrahamic religions and Platonism in respect to this Platonic conversion was assisted by uh, Epi. Epi Streps on in the repeated refrain of the psalm, Turn us again, O Lord, show us the light of thy countenance, and we shall be saved, in the Septuagint, and translated in Latin in the Vulgate by Converte. Equally, the representation of that from which we are saved encourages assimilation. We are bent down, incurvatus in Latin. Anselm links the psalm with Boethius, who certainly knew Plato's text, when he described the fallen children of Adam as bent over double so that they can only see down. Bonaventure gathers the elements when he describes fallen humanity as incarvatus in tenebris. Boethius' Christianity in the Consolation is secularized by assimilation to Platonism, never showing itself directly. The conversion of the prisoner begins with his eyes cast down in terram de fixo, so that saving philosophy must sit and bend down to him. Its center is the prayer, O qui perpetua, sung by philosophy on the authority of Plato's Timaeus and summarizing its doctrine. It effects the conversion of human ratio, reason, up beyond, it, it, up, beyond itself up the line to intellectus. Beatrice, wearing Minerva's crown, as she's described, effects the same for Dante, this move from reason to intellect, Tom Jones is converted to and by Sophia, the wisdom. The result in Boethius and Dante is the Plotinian simplification of vision, drawing reason toward the divine intuition. Its means is a knowledge of the nature of fortuna, unceasing change, mostly gained from the experience of practical life. In common with the Platonic tradition, Boethius teaches that fortune 
operates under and for providence, which brings good out of evil. This use of fortune and the providential drawing of good out of evil are essential to Tom Jones and the other secular conversions. Plato and Aristotle turn the Delphi, Genothi si Auton, into a means of conversion by reversing the Socratic philosophical religion where it agrees with the poets. For them, it commands us to know what we are through the divine. So, to quote Aristotle, taken up by Plotinus, being human, we are not to think like mortals, but rather strive to participate in the divine life. The locus classicus for Platonic self-knowledge is the Alcibiades. Socrates, the faithful lover, argues with Athens' most fatally beautiful kouros. The oracle's admonition is interpreted to require knowledge of self through the higher, the soul, or the true lover, and ultimately God. Mirroring is essential to understanding both what is, as theophany, the appearance of God, and our knowing. Matching it, Paul, writing about the itinerarium, love travels from higher to lower kinds of knowing to the Corinthians until reaching the mutual divine human intuition Boethius thought, compares the beginning to vision through a mirror. With such a convergence of Platonism and St. Paul, it is not surprising that mirroring is essential